job choir. Amen. Amen. Now let me warn you guys about something. I was told this week that this was going to be a lively bunch. That you came a long way to be here today. And I'm expecting that. Don't you disappoint me this morning. Amen. Ain't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Lord, I tell you, it's uh, what a privilege that we have when we uh, realize the great opportunity to be able not just to gather in here with the, uh, with the freedom that we have to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, but when we realize that uh, all of the trouble that's happening uh, all around us, people that would love the opportunity just to be in the house of God today, but God has appointed us uh, just such a special, special time to be in His house today. Uh, when I was praying this morning, I told the Lord, I said, I couldn't thank you enough uh, this moment for what you've already done for me in my life. And if you never do anything else, uh, I could never cease to praise you. As the Bible said in Psalm 139, let everything that hath breath praise you the Lord. You know why? Amen. Because the breath that you took into your lungs don't even belong to you today. Amen. It's only possible because of who he is. Not because we're good, but because he's good today. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 12 is where I want to be this morning. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter number 12, uh, I want to read those first two verses this morning. I'm preaching, if the Lord would help us, on the race that is set before us. Uh, we know very well <clears throat> the uh, 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Um, we go back and we begin to see what the Lord told us in that chapter and we realize that He began to uh, put on display for us uh, all of the great men and women that had lived down through the history of time. Uh, we read their stories and we realize the great things that they've done. Uh, we re read about men like Moses and Abraham. We read about uh, Isaac. We talk about uh, some of the great exploits that we find in the Word of God. And uh, when we come to Hebrews chapter number 11, the uh, Bible has told us over and over again uh, of the great things that they've done. Uh, but in Hebrews chapter number 12, where I want to be today, in verse number 1, I want you to pay attention this morning uh, to what the Bible says and, and, and really uh, understand what he's trying to convey to us uh, this morning. Uh, watch what the Bible says. Wherefore, uh, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience, watch this next part, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want you to watch the language that Hebrews chapter number 12 uses uh, when he begins to describe to us and we uh, understand about this great cloud of witnesses that uh, we have put to us in uh, chapter number 11, how that he describes to us all of the things uh, that we read about in the Word of God in the Old Testament, some in the New, that uh, took place and how that uh, these old saints of God, they, uh, they tread the way for people like me and you that sit here today. Uh, and the Bible said, and all that they've done, that uh, wherefore, seeing that we have such a great a cloud of witnesses, uh, he said, now it's time that uh, we run with patience the race that is set before us today. 
uh, you'll find the narrative changes uh, in chapter number 12 and it shifts the focus uh, from everything that had been done in days gone by uh, to the day that we live in uh, and he tells us uh, if you're keeping count this morning uh, six times uh, in that one verse uh, uh, he tells us that it's a race that we are running today uh, he calls it our race uh, he uses those words six times we uh, us and our to indicate to us that uh, the people that we read about uh, in Hebrews chapter number 11 their race is run uh, their life has been uh, completed their story has been written and now it's time uh, it's our turn uh, to step out on the stage and uh, to pick up the torch and uh, to run the race that God uh, has set before us today and uh, brother I want to tell you this morning that uh, what we need in the house of God is uh, folks that will step up today and uh, realize that God uh, uh, brother has put us in a race today and uh, we understand that uh, brother when we look at Moses and Abraham that uh, brother they've run their race and uh, brother they have completed their course and uh, brother in this day that we live in uh, uh, you realize that God uh, uh, brother has put us in this race today and uh, given us unique uh, uh, of course a unique to us this morning that uh, brother that we might run our race that uh, God has set before us uh, uh, just as they did theirs uh, I thought this week about uh, uh, those old saints of God uh, uh, brother when they were there uh, when they were there and uh, brother when Moses came along uh, uh, brother he God had never instructed anybody uh, uh, to do what he'd instructed Moses to do and uh, uh, brother Moses had a race that was unique to him uh, uh, brother but there come a time that uh, brother in uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter number 31 there came a day uh, uh, that the Bible said that uh, Moses had run just as far as he could run uh, and he called a young man by the name of Joshua uh, brother out on the stage and uh, the Bible said that he called him in the sight of all of Israel uh, uh, you know why uh, uh, because he wanted everybody to understand uh, uh, brother that Joshua uh, uh, was getting ready to enter into his race today uh, uh, brother can I tell you this morning uh, uh, that the race that you run this morning uh, uh, you're not running the race of anybody before you uh, and you're not even running the race of anybody around you uh, amen but this is your race today uh, and brother God uh, uh, through the voice of Moses uh, uh, called Joshua out there uh, and Moses said unto Joshua uh, in the sight of all of the people uh, and brother he said be strong uh, and be courageous uh, uh, he said for the people uh, have been promised a land uh, he said based on what you do uh, amen they're going to inherit that land today uh, amen I'm telling you uh, uh, brother what we need today is to understand uh, uh, brother that God uh, has called us into this race uh, amen and you know whose lives depend on it uh, amen the lives of the world uh, uh, that do not know him today uh, and brother they're uh, uh, depending uh, uh, on what we do today uh, uh, brother Joshua had a decision to make uh, uh, brother he had to decide uh, uh, whether he was going to be faithful uh, and courageous uh, or whether he was going to be fearful uh, and brother and cower away uh, uh, you know why God uh, and brother listen you know why God called him out in the sight of all of the people uh, uh, because you know what our natural tendency is today uh, amen when God calls us to do something uh, if we're not real careful uh, uh, we'll cower uh, and just kind of fade back into the background uh, and we'll say let somebody else do that uh, amen I'm doing all right with where I'm at uh, amen but I want to tell you today uh, amen just as every saint of God uh, amen I mean listen we preach about them uh, we sing songs about them uh, amen but listen uh, we need to understand that uh, brother when God called them I'm talking about uh, the ones that shaped uh, uh, Christianity as we know it uh, in the Old Testament the ones that uh, amen was carrying that torch uh, uh, to bring Christ to the New Testament uh, amen every one of them uh, had a race to run uh, and they stepped out uh, uh, in their time uh, 
in their generation. They stepped out on the stage and they said, I'm going to run my race. I'm going to do it without fear. I'm going to do it courageously. Amen. You know what we need in this country today? We don't need government to do one more thing. Amen. Listen, we don't need to look to the White House, to the State House, to the Courthouse. We need to look to God's house. Amen. We need some of God's men to step up today and say, I realize that God has put me in this race and I'm going to run my race today. Amen. Listen, Brother Bill, I can't run your race for you. I can't run the race that God has put Lonnie into, but I can run my race. I can realize it's my time that I have a race to run and I'm going to be willing to stand with the bloodstained banner and then wave to the world to let them know that there is a reality and a serving a true and a living God today. Oh, listen. God help us today into the race that God has put us into. You know what we're going to do from time to time? We're going to look back and boy, we're going to recount the stories of Moses and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. We're going to talk about what Elijah done up on Mount Carmel. And boy, I think that's a good schoolmaster for every one of us. But I've just got to be honest with you today. There's going to come a point you're going to have to quit looking back and say, now this is the race that God has put me into. They ran their race and thank God for what they done but I have my own race that God has brought me to. Amen. And this, this race that God has brought me to, it's unique to me and to my generation. You see, every generation that we've ever known down through the history of time, amen, they've had problems of their own, but God has called somebody in every generation. It didn't matter what the times look like. Amen. When the children of Israel was in bondage and never and thought they'd never see a way out. Amen. God called a man by the name of Moses. Amen. And he said, Moses, I've got a race for you to run. And Moses, thank God, ran his race. Amen. When Moses' race was done, he said, I've taken them as far as I can take them. He said, now here's Joshua, and he's going to lead you to the promised land. Joshua had a unique race in front of him, unlike anything that Moses had ever seen. And Joshua took them just as far as he could take them. Amen. Listen. And then Joshua's days came to an end. And you know what God done? He called somebody else. And then he called somebody else. Amen. Till finally we came to this generation and we're looking around and we're saying we need another Moses. We need another Joshua. We're in a great race. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, you may be that very person today. You need to realize that you have a race. Uh, you have a course uh, uh, that's been laid out for you uh, uh, from the foundation of the earth. Uh, amen. I wonder if anybody here uh, uh, really believes today uh, uh, that before your, uh, was, you was ever consumed, uh, uh, brother, before you were ever conceived in your mother's womb, uh, uh, that God had already plotted out your course uh, and he knew the race uh, that he was going to put you in. Uh, I wonder if we believe uh, if he knew that uh, uh, before we ever knew who we even was if we believe that God is able to take us through the race that he's put us in today. But let me tell you, I've got to warn you, it won't come easy. No, no, no. Amen. No, what is what the Bible said? He said, wherefore seeing we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the sin, the weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us today. Notice what he said. We know today that it if we're going to run this race effectively, we've got to do it without sin. I mean, that's the easy part, isn't it? Everybody would agree with that this morning. Amen. But I want to tell you, to you today, it's not just sin that we need to lay aside, but it's every weight. It's everything that would beset us from running this race today. You know, the worst mistake we could make this morning is to look at our lives and ask this question, is it sin? 
Because I want to tell you this morning, that's a cop out today. There's some things that it may not be sin, but it also may not be expedient this morning for you to have in your life today. I mean, that's about the lowest question we could ask. Is it sin? You know what we need to ask? We need to ask this question. Does it hinder me from running today? Or does it help me to run the race that has been set before me today? Amen. When I look at my life, amen, I realize very quickly what's sin and what's not. But where I have a problem this morning is looking around my life and realizing the things that will hold me back, that will literally weight me down and to keep me from running the race that God has set before me effectively today. Brother, I've got to ask myself on a daily basis, brother, is this what benefits me and helps me to run the race that God has set before me? And brother, there's just some things I've got to be willing to lay aside, not just sin, but a lot of other things today. You see, some of you here this morning, you say this all the time, and I'm guilty of it too, and if everybody else would amen this, you know we've all done it. We say the Bible doesn't say it's wrong, but I want to tell you that it's not just sin that we need to lay aside, but he said lay aside every weight, anything that would affect us from running the race that God has put us in today. We've just got to lay it aside. Amen. There's some things in my life that might not be expedient for me, but you might be okay with it. But if it does not help me to run the race, I've got to learn to lay it aside. Amen. Then you know what we're going to do? We're going to look at our lives and we're going to realize we're in a race and we're going to realize that we need to be running this race with patience. And we're going to say, okay, Lord, I'm going to lay aside every sin. That's the easy part. It's okay to follow those Ten Commandments. I mean, those things the Bible said, His commandments, they're not grievous. I mean, it would benefit every one of us. But you know where it really gets hard? When we start laying aside those weights. When we start doing some things that may not look like sin. They may not be sin, but they just don't help us to run the race. And then we'll look at our lives and we'll say, Lord, I don't know about that. That makes it real hard. I mean, my life is good. I like this in my life. And it's going to look like a lot of loss. You're going to look at it and you're going to say, without that, it's going to hurt real bad. And that's where we transition into Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number two. Look at this verse if you would. The Bible said when we get to that place where we realize that laying aside the weight that is hindering us from running for him, the weight that's hindering us from running effectively, it said that then we look unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. I want you to notice this today. He said for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross, despised the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Go back with me for just a moment if you would to Gethsemane. We remember that faithful night down there in the garden. Jesus had just had the last supper with his disciples. He knew life was just about over on this side of eternity. He gets down there to the garden. He asked his three disciples that were with him. He said I want you to watch and pray. He gets down there and he looks down into that cup. Amen. He saw misery in that cup. You know what Jesus said? Jesus had to say in Gethsemane, this is going to be a lot of pain. Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., I'm getting ready to suffer a lot of loss. Amen. Listen, I'm talking to you about the weight that God is telling you you need to put off and in order to effectively run the race that he set before you. Jesus said tomorrow morning is going to be a lot of loss. He said in fact it's going to hurt real bad. 
I'm going to lose a lot. It's not just going to be tomorrow morning. He said it's going to last all throughout the day. When he looked down into that cup, you know what Jesus saw? He saw the race that God had set before him. You see, God did not bring him here to simply perform miracles, amen, and to hold sermons in his mother-in-law's house, in Peter's mother-in-law's house. But what he brought him for here for, the purpose, his race that he was to run, amen, was not those things, but it was on an old cross on a hill far away. Amen, listen, Jesus looked down into that cup. He said, tomorrow morning, I'm getting ready to suffer a lot of loss. He said, it's gonna be painful and it's gonna be bad. It's gonna last all through the day and all through the night. He said, I'll never sleep again until I die on that cross. Amen, Jesus realized when he looked down into that cup, he was looking down the course that God had prepared for him. But thank God today that he gave us an example. Amen, the Bible said looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, preacher, how did he do it? How did he look down into that cup? How did he look at that course that was laid out for him? How did he see every pain that he was going to endure? How did he see himself in Pilate's hall when they stripped him naked? Amen. They put that cat of nine tails, amen, across his back. Amen. Till he was unrecognizable. How did he walk up Calvary's hill? Amen. And lay himself willingly down. Amen. On an old rugged cross. Amen. And they lifted him high and they stretched him wide and they mocked him. Amen. The people that he loved. Amen. They said, do away with him. Crucify him. The disciples that swore themselves unto death, they were all gone away. How did the Son of God get to a place in his life where he said, I'm willing to run the race that is set before me. I'm willing to look, stare, stare this cup right down in the eye. I'm willing to see the course that's been plotted out for me. And I'm going to run with patience the race that is set before me. You understand today that he was so much man that he was able to look at the Father and say, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me but thank God he was so much God that he said but nevertheless not my will but thine be done today amen you know what we're going to have to do today to run this race effectively we're going to have to look to God and say Lord I wish there was another way but I realize amen that because you know best I'm willing to do what you have called me to do and run my race today how did he do that? And I want to ask you the question. Listen, how can we do that today? Amen. The next part of that verse makes it very clear. Who for the joy that was set before him. You know what he had to do? He said, I know the course is going to be painful. I know it's going to be bad. I know it's going to be long. I know I'm going to be tired. I know it's going to be rough. I know I'm going to suffer a lot of loss. But oh, thank God. He said, I'm looking at the joy that is set before me today. Amen, I tell you what you need to realize today. Amen, it's because of the joy that is set before you and I today that we can stand, amen, with the people of God and say, I'm willing to run my race. I ain't running Moses' race. I ain't running Aaron's race. Amen, I ain't running Abraham's race. But I'm running my race today. I'm gonna look to my Savior. He's the author and finisher of my faith. And I'm gonna realize that his joy has now become my joy today and in the backdrop of all the pain and of all of the suffering if you could just see past that you'll see what Jesus saw and you'll realize amen in spite of all of the pain in spite of all of the loss in spite of all of the suffering that there's joy to set before us and child of God hear me it will be worth it today 
Amen. I promise you, Paul realized, amen, when he was beaten beyond recognition, amen, with a stripe 39 times, the legal limit of his day, Paul said that the sufferings of this present time, they're not worthy to be compared with the joy that shall be revealed. I'm telling you this morning, child of God, we've got a race that God has set before us, but thank God we can run today and not because of who we are but because of who he is today. And boy, listen, when you get to that place where you look at that pain, you look at that suffering, and you look at that loss, you know what you need to say to the flesh and to the devil today? You just need to say, whatever I'm going through, it's not even comparable today. I can't even mention it in the same breath. Connie, come and get a song this morning. I can't even mention it in the same breath this morning with what God is doing in my life. I'm just gonna keep walking. I'm just gonna keep keep running. I might have to get down and crawl from time to time but I ain't going back today. There ain't nothing to go back to this morning. Hey man, Egypt is behind me. I've got nothing to go back to today. The joy that is set before me it's going to be worth it one day when we stand hey man, with that heavenly choir and sing a song that the angels can't even sing today. I'm telling you it's going to be worth it. Every tear that was shed, every sleepless night, every prayer that was prayed, we're going to say one day, it's been worth every mile today.